reminder that next Sunday we'll be observing Monday on Sunday. You're encouraged to come dressed as you would on Monday to show everybody your talents that the Lord has blessed you with. Uh, blood pressure checks. Uh, Gary will be doing those after worship this morning in uh, Celia in the secretary's office. Uh, anybody wants to get their blood pressure checked? And uh, Karen, you have an announcement? I have, ooh. <laughs> it's on now. Okay, I've got three quick announcements. Um, a few weeks ago, I told you about the harvest pack that we're going to be doing October the 15th. We've had a lot of meetings after church, and so um, I am planning on sitting underneath the breezeway over here and having some crusaders with me, and we will be signing up for volun. well, just I just need your email. This isn't the sign up list to volunteer for this, but if you would like to have the opportunity to volunteer, I'm going to have an email list. Those of you who are not, do not have email and you still want to volunteer and you want to go ahead and commit yourself now, it's going to be at 930. It's going to be about two hours on October the 15th. It is going to be here in the fellowship building and we are going to be packing meals to be sent overseas to children. So, um, this will be, I will have the sign-up list. There are brochures like this out in the front if you're interested in just learning more. And I have the donation bucket that will be out there with me as well if you would like to donate it. Um, each meal is 23 cents. Um, so just think a dollar feeds a child four meals. And these are children that don't get any meals, so that's powerful. Okay, secondly, we have the beautiful God's Creation calendars for sale. Um, they will actually be here next week, but if you would like to pre-order, I only ordered a certain number. So if you want to make sure that you get one, then see me and put, uh, and I'll put you on the list, and they are $7. Also, I ordered King James and New International versions this year, so let me know which, which one you would like. And thirdly, we have the coupon books for sale. I will have them out there. You are, they're $20 a piece, and if you would like one, you are more than welcome to. Thank you for supporting the Crusaders. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Are there any more announcements? Elizabeth? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Are there any more announcements this morning? Uh, I've got one name to add to the alert prayer list, uh, Michael McCray, and also just uh, remember to keep uh, Gina Humphrey's family in your prayer. Uh, visitation will be this Friday at Willis Reynolds and the funeral is Saturday at 11 o'clock at Emmanuel in Lincoln. Are there any more names to add to the prayer list? Wally? Martha? Free. F -R -E. F -R -E. Are there any others? Jim. Uh, Shirley, Robinson. Shirley Robinson. Are there any others? Fran. Lily Waters. Lily Waters. Waters. Are there any others? Ron. Uh, Richard Sipe, Senior, my dad. Richard Sipe. Okay. Any others? Uh, Pastor. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the 16th Sunday of the Pentecost season. And our first worship service for worshiping together. Well, technically two weeks ago we did, but, you know, we were, we were observing. We were still worshiping, but it's great to be here. Um, this is my first Sunday here. out and welcome my wife Elizabeth and I here. Uh, we're, we're excited to be here. We're really happy to be here and um, I feel like God's got really great things in store for us as we, as we uh, answer a call to lead others to Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, always lead and follow us with your grace, that we may be still more intent on doing good. Grant this, we pray, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. first lesson is from Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 15 through 20. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways, and by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his rules, 
Then you shall live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. But if your heart turns away, and you will not hear, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are going over the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore choose life that you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice, and holding fast to him, for he is your life and length of days, that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 1. Found on page 215 in your hymnal. The second lesson is Philemon, verses 1 through 21. St. Paul writes, Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved fellow worker, and Aphia, our sister, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> I thank my God always when I remember you in my prayers, because I hear of your love and of the faith that you have toward the Lord Jesus and for all the saints. And I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. For I have derived much joy and comfort from your love, my brother, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. Accordingly, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do what is required, yet for love's sake I prefer to appeal to you. I, Paul, an old man and now a prisoner also for Christ Jesus, appeal to you for my child, Onesimus, whose father I became in my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful to you and to me. I am sending him back to you, sending my very heart. I would have been glad to keep him with me in order that he might serve me on your behalf during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I prefer to do nothing without your consent in order that your goodness might not be by compulsion but of your own accord. For this perhaps is why he was parted from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, as a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, 
receive him as you would receive me. If he has wronged you at all or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, write this with my own hand. I will repay it to say nothing of your owing me, even your own self. Yes, brother, I want some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I write to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. At the same time, prepare a guest room for me, for I am hoping that through your prayers I will be graciously given to you. Here ends the reading. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Now a great crowd now great crowds accompanied Jesus. And he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it. Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all will see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, or what king going out to encounter another king in war? will not sit down first and deliberate whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. And if not, while the other is yet a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Salt is good. But if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is of no use either for the soil or for the manure pile. It is thrown away. Let he who has ears to hear, let him hear. This is the gospel of our Lord. At this time, I invite the children to come up for the children's message. <coughs> Did I mention that today is my first Sunday here? Officially first Sunday here, officially second Sunday. <laughs> so bear with me as I bear with me as I figure out this, whether or not to decide to use a chair or not. So, <laughs> hey, I got to think if that's my biggest concern on my first Sunday here, I'm doing great. <laughs> but that being said, this isn't called the pastor sermon. This is called the children's sermon. So good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Good. Everybody doing good? You know, I brought that up earlier to the congregation, you know, about this being my second Sunday here. And last time I was here was a couple weeks ago when the congregation voted to, when you, because you guys are part of the congregation, when you, St. James Lutheran Church, everyone here decided to call me as your pastor. Thank you for that. 
One thing I saw, though, two weeks ago, compared to this week, we got another one of these really harsh gospel lessons from Jesus. Did, you get, did y'all see that? Did you all see that? <laughs> yeah. Can you believe that? First time you meet a congregation, second time even, you get another one of these hate your family passages from Jesus. So I was thinking about that, and it really bothered me when I read that this week, when I was studying and preparing for, for today, because we know that's not what Jesus is really saying, right? Because we know from the Ten Commandments, we're to honor our mother and father. That also includes honoring our grandparents and our great-grandparents, all of our, all of our ancestors, all those in our family. Jesus is not telling people to break the third commandment. He's not telling them to break the law here. But he's saying, he's saying that to get people's attentions. He's trying to get people to wake up and realize that following him is not always easy. It could actually, it's actually some of the toughest things that we could ever do. Because although there's lots of good, good things that we see, sometimes times get tough. You ever have a tough, a tough time where, where you just want to quit? You know, you got a bad day, you wake up, and you just, you just want to put the covers over your head and, and you know, forget about it and wish it could go away? We've all had those days. But Jesus is showing us, Jesus is showing us that he's always with us, no matter how good or how bad the day can get. Regardless of what we have going on in our life, he's always with us. And he's always asking us to follow him and to be with him. So whenever you see that in the Bible, when Jesus is talking to the crowds like that, he's not, trying, he's not telling people to break the law. But he's just trying to say, hey, following me, following me requires complete dedication. And that includes loving our fathers and mothers as well. So let's have a prayer together. Let's have a prayer together. Congregation, feel free to join in. Dear Jesus, Jesus, thank you for showing me me. that you're always with me me. in good times, times. bad times, Easy times times. and difficult times. times. Help me to keep faith faith. to continue to follow you. you. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming up, guys. You did a great job. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Of our three readings this morning, I think I like the Old Testament lesson. No? I think the Old Testament lesson may appeal to our hearts more. Who doesn't love hearing a heartfelt invitation? Did you hear that earlier? When the lesson was read, did you hear Moses appealing to the Israelites saying, Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and holding fast to him? For that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Most of us would agree that we like to be invited rather than summoned. Most of us would rather receive an invitation rather than a summons in the mail. I know for me, I respond better being asked 
rather than being ordered. It's human nature, really. We want to be part of something, something good, something good with positive results right away, rather than being ordered to give up everything and not knowing what the end result will be. It's probably why Jesus' words are so challenging today. Jesus is reminding each of us that our discipleship, our discipleship journeys with him, are long-term and require a complete commitment, even in the toughest of times. Today's gospel reading is Jesus talking about discipleship. He's traveling around the countryside, traveling along the countryside, and as he's traveling, the crowds are getting large. They're growing in large, significant numbers, out of control, wherever he goes. And people are jumping on the Jesus bandwagon. They're joining the Jesus movement. It's new and exciting. Where else have, we, where else have they seen a rabbi challenging cold institutional leadership of the day? An ordinary guy from up the road in Nazareth boldly teaching and claiming what God is like. Where else have they seen the raising of the dead and someone reaching out to the many others who are marginalized and on the fringes of society? Bold and dynamic, new and exciting, positive and life-giving ministry. Probably for the first time ever. Jesus, is reali Jesus realizes that his time on earth is ending. And he's sensing that people are not really truly understanding what's going on here. The crowds want to be part of the fun stuff and follow Jesus to see what's going to happen next. They like the fun stuff. They like all those things I mentioned earlier. But what happens... What happens when it starts getting tougher? Will they, stay when, will they stay with Jesus when he goes down the mountain? Just keep in mind, he's standing, he's standing on a hill. He's overlooking Jerusalem as he's teaching this to the crowds following him. Are those same crowds going to follow him down the mountain, into the valley, and into Jerusalem? Will those following by his side, what are they going to do when they encounter both hostile Jewish leaders and corrupt Roman powers as they come after Jesus? Will those same people, those jumping on the bandwagon, will they be there when Jesus is mocked, whipped, Beaten up, left half for dead. How many will remain when he's dying on the cross for our salvation? Salvation comes from the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who can and is willing to go to the darkest of all places and rises from the dead, defeating the power of sin and death once and for all, for all those who believe in him. Jesus shows us firsthand what discipleship looks like. He reminds us that it is a journey, a very long-term journey, and that there are good and bad times along the way. There are times when we want to quit, pull the covers over our heads and say, no more, I can't deal with it, not another day. I can't take another hostile stare or another or one more ungrateful person telling me off when I'm trying to help them. We've all faced those times in our lives. You and I have had dark ex those dark experiences and the uncertainty of knowing, the uncertainty of not knowing what the outcome will look like. But you see, the beauty of discipleship is that discipleship is not a death march. It's not all pain and suffering. Because along the way, there is joy in celebration. 
there are gifts, wanted and unexpected. And surprises and moments along the way greater than we can ever imagine. Those moments where we're really feeling God's love firsthand. And along the way, we meet and get to know new people we would have never imagined meeting six months ago. Speaking for myself, for me, our first meeting a few months back, our meeting is a gracious and precious gift from God. Yes, Jesus calls us, each of us, to pick up our crosses and follow him. Those crosses of doubt, fear, uncertainty, all those things that hold us back from following Jesus each and every day. Yes, we are called from the day we're baptized to the day we enter the church triumphant to follow Jesus. But you see, you see what's good What's awesome about this is that Jesus has already done the heavy lifting for us by going to the cross and carrying with him all the stuff we carry. He lifts up all who believe in him. And because of Jesus' resurrection, we are given new life. We have a mandate to go and live boldly and lovingly, going out and sharing the good news with everyone we meet. We are given each and every day a new lease on life, knowing that we have Jesus walking with us every step of the way, carrying us along the way for all those times that we can't walk alone. We also have our faith community, our brothers and sisters in Christ, both here at St. James and throughout other churches. All those people following Christ as well, lifting us up as we lift them up as well. We're given the promise of freedom for all eternity that comes only through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection so that we can live and thrive no matter what the cost. No earthly institution or possession could ever come close to the life-giving salvation that is Jesus himself. I mentioned at the beginning of my sermon today that I like today's Old Testament reading. I like the Old Testament reading a little bit better because of Moses appealing to the Israelites saying, choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving your God, obeying him, and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give your ancestors. I love hearing those words. I still like hearing those words. But I think after hearing Jesus' words today, I think I'm hearing them a little bit better in light of Jesus' words. Because he gives those Old Testament words a new life. How appropriate is it that we are talking about life, a new life in Christ today? It's very appropriate that when we choose life, that when we choose life, we commit to Christ and we are choosing to love our Lord and Savior and our God who created the heavens and the earth with all that we are, with all that we have, choosing to obey him, listening to his words, and holding fast to him all the days of our lives so that we can fully and boldly live in the land that God has given us. We have a lot of living and loving to do here. No need to follow the crowds and what they might be looking for. Because we have the cross of Christ to lead and guide us along the way. We have right here, right now, today and for many years to come, Jesus' gift of eternal salvation. Let the celebration continue. Because we're all in this together.
In Jesus' name, amen. God has made us as people through our baptisms into Christ's life, death, and resurrection. Living together in trust, hope, faith, and love, we confess the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 64 of our hymnals. We confess together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. In the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiping glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in creation. Lord God Almighty, you know the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. For the sake of your only begotten Son, put false ways from us, turn our hearts away from all sins and fabricated gods, and graciously teach us your word that we may delight in it. Refresh the hearts of your saints in this and every congregation and strengthen us in faith so that we might in turn show fervent love to one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, you are our life and length of days and you set before us your gift of life and your holy word for us and for our children. Preserve your institutions of marriage and family. Guard husbands and wives, parents and children, both from despising and idolizing one another. Instead, let every relationship in the home exemplify your unconditional love for us in Christ and grant that all might follow him in their service to one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, preserve us from the ways of the wicked and prosper us in your path. Prosper us in your paths. We, we commend to you all who bear office in our land and ask you to make them a blessing to those they serve. Grant to us every joy in the calling you have given to us that we might render service to you in our works of love toward our neighbors. Remember those in need of honest labor and daily bread and give them gainful employment according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord God, remember all those who struggle to discern your word. We pray for those who get discouraged, who turn away when challenges appear. Send forth your holy word and bring them to repentance, so that they might be restored to the households of family and faith, rejoicing in your grace and eager to make amends. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we rejoice and give thanks for all congregations in the NALC. We pray for our Bishop John Berdoski and for our mission districts. We give thanks and praise for all pastors beginning new calls and for all congregations discerning and praying for new pastors and leadership to guide them. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. prayer. Lord God, we pray for all those enjoying this Labor Day weekend. Guide our travels and our gatherings that are times of rest and rejuvenation. Lord God, move our hearts to seek our Sabbaths in you and not in our own accomplishments. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. prayer. Everlasting Father, hear our prayers on behalf of all whose souls are heavy with sorrow and strengthen them according to your word. Grant relief and deliverance to all who call upon you for help. We pray for all those on our congregation's prayer list, especially George Young at the death of his sister Gina. We pray for all those who are serving in our military, both at home and abroad. We pray pray for all of our police, firefighters, and EMS workers as they seek to keep order in our land. Be with all those who have lost loved ones and be with us as we reach out and console those who are grieving. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's share God's peace together.
Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should, at all times and in all places, offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy one, God of heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, 
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. And gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's life, death, and resurrection until he comes again. Remembering his life-giving words, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord.